Sarah Stewart, uh, they them pronouns. I'm the news co-leader in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I am here to teach you how to create a pride tag and give a little insight on the significance of the pride tag because pride is coming. I, actually, actually, pride is here. Pride lives here. Pride lives here. And it's. Roy G. Biv. Except we don't do it in the go. So what I found works best is if you have one person for each color and then like two people helping to move the tags from shirt to shirt. Because if you only pride tag like once a year, if you have 150 people, hopefully 150 shirts show up. And so it's just like a lot of shirts to work through. So if you are going to do it during your workout, it's cool to have like a paint crew that day. Normally Minneapolis doesn't have a paint crew because we're pretty small and like we have three people leading so we can easily, between the three of us, figure tagging out. But Pride Day we usually like have a paint crew. It's a great way to involve like injury deck people um, or people that are just like, I need a day off today, I'm, it's a rest day situation. Um, and then yeah, they each get a paint color and then two people move the stencils from shirt to shirt. It's my first time doing all of the colors. Uh, so I have laid out my shirt as a reference point for me to look at. So if you, if you have one of those shirts, it might not be the worst idea. Let's fucking go. That's how, that's what we say in Minnesota. Let's fucking go. After you've like laid everything out nice, uh, you want to be careful about like, this is going to be reflective. Um, so I just want to like be aware of that. If you have a piece of cardboard or something like that, you can cover it up. Cause I'm like, should I have a ruler? Should they be like four millimeters apart? Or is it one centimeter? Is it a half of an inch? It's this. This is what it is. <laughs> Less paint is more. And you want to paint the shirt, not the stencils. That's the best tip I've learned about tagging. Yeah, here we go. So like, I was like all into November Project right away. And so I started following, I, and I traveled like a fair amount for football. And so I like started following all of the groups. And I saw that some of them had pride shirts. And I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Like, I'm sure that we'll do that. We're Minneapolis, Minnesota, for gosh sakes. Uh, one of the like gayest, friendliest places. And uh, we didn't do it my first year. And I was like, is this, is this like not, are we not, is this not a, a place where I can be gay? And so I was like a little like, at, like kind of frustrating, I guess. And kind of just like alarming. It made me like second guess like who I was working out with. Um, but then I was like, other places are doing it. So like, maybe we just didn't like have our shit together kind of a thing. Cause it was very clear that like other places are doing it. So this is probably a gay friendly place. But I was very glad when we did it the next year because it's just like, I don't need to like be gay while I'm working out. I just need to like be Sarah. But it's nice to know the people that I'm around are, but that's like a welcoming space. You know when I introduce myself, I'm not like, hi, I'm Sarah, I'm the queer person. I'm ready to work out with you. It's just like, hey, I'm just like me. But it's nice to like have something like this just to like signal that I'm in a welcoming environment. And that's like what a pride tag can do. Just like show that this is a welcoming space. If it's your first time and you like literally were just like walking down the street on your run and are discovering the crew in your city and you see a pride tag, you can be like, oh, okay, like I, like, I belong here and people will love and respect me, kind of a thing. I know that this is intimidating. I don't know that this is intimidating. I assume it's intimidating for some people. Um, and I think that the most important thing that you can do as a leader is at least do it. That's all you can do is try. That's, if you try your best, that's all that anyone can ever ask from you. I mean, obviously, I don't speak for all queer people, I don't speak for all trans people, I don't speak for anyone but myself. But to me, the significance of seeing a pride tag makes me feel at home and it makes me feel safe in a way that I can't, I can't put into words. I can cry about it really well. If anybody wants to hop on a Zoom call, I'll cry for you. Um, but it just like, it. so much of life can be so hard and complicated and scary and to have 45 minutes 
in a place that I can go where I know that I'm safe is like sometimes that's all I have that day, and that's a that's a big fucking deal. And I think that you know, I there are people that are understanding their queerness. There are people that are understanding um, not hating queer people because that's how they grew up. And I think that pride takes can hold a different significance to each member of your community. There are people that maybe know this about themselves and aren't ready to say it out to the world yet, but they can wear a shirt because everyone else is wearing a shirt and they can know what that means for themselves. Sometimes pride is loud and it's exciting and it's rainbows and it's unicorns and it's confetti and it's dancing and parades and sometimes pride is just knowing a thing about yourself and investigating it more and that, that, that's courageous and that can be pride too. Pride comes, there's a cool spectrum and you never know where any of your members fall on that. Um, with themselves, with a family member, with other people in their community. Um, it, it seems silly, it seems just like paint on a shirt, um, but it's, it's so much more than that for so many people. I'm Sarah Stewart and that's the rest of the story. <laughs>